You get really good at making a bunch of money fast, but because a lot of us don't go through the patience of learning financial literacy, like my boy Graham that freaking bought a bank. He bought a bank. What does that it's, it's Okay guys, as I fix this, Mike Vasile from MikeVasile.com. In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to my buddy Graham Stephan buying a bank. Now, to set things this things off, it, it's just kind of like amazing and surprising because I haven't talked to Graham in like two years, right? Like you could see on his channel two years ago, we had this like entire group interview where it was just me and my YouTube counterparts who are now absolutely killing it as I got completely lazy and just dropped the ball on my YouTube channel. As they were focusing on continuing their YouTube careers, I, for some reason, got lazy, you know, for, for some reason... When, when I start traveling and I moved to Bali, my, my desire to actually want to create content actually went down. So it's all my fault. But but it's just amazing to see just how far he has came from the interview when we all kind of did like the first ever make money online investing collaboration back in the day before I just turned into a lazy piece of shit. So likely what happened when I woke up today and I was like, what video am I going to create today? You know, cause, cause you know, as a creator, sometimes you don't know what videos you actually want to create. And there's like this thing where like you, you feel like pressure to always think. So I was like, okay, why not just do what everyone else does and just basically chase clout and just make a video, me reacting to Graham Stephan and how he did exactly what most successful should do and that stay consistent in a channel that would allow him to go and invest and buy a bank when people like me just get lazy when things start getting good and then uh, makes a bunch of bad business investment advice, which is why before I actually begin, like always, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a guru. I'm just some guy. I'm just some guy that just left America, lives on the other side of the world, doesn't even really know what's going on in America. So you, sh you shouldn't even really take my, you, you should take everything that I say with a grain of salt because I'm just so delirious living outside of America for so long and living in Asia that, like I said, just, this is just all speculation, but, but I have this video up and running. I woke up and I saw it and of course I'm going to have to react to it. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things, of course, like jealousy, anger for myself for being so lazy, but mostly just like inspiration for somebody that, you know, you met two years ago, you, you, everyone's like on the same level and then out of nowhere, he blows up, right? So th this is just like my perspective of things. And let's just get on with the video. What's up, you guys? It's Graham here. So through a weird twist of events, I just bought a bank. Instead of operating like a traditional bank that just pays you a set interest rate and that's it, Yada Bank intends to gamify the experience by turning your savings account into something like a giveaway where every $25 you save gives you one ticket into their weekly drawing where you could earn all the way up to $10 million. What? So that's right there. Let, let me let me i guess this channel is more about like how graham stefan is doing everything right and how i make every single stupid business investment decision ever and why you literally should just like watch my channel to figure out what not to do and maybe like watch graham's channel on exactly what to do right so this is this is pretty insane right like there's a lot of like emotions coming up because i'm like man mike why were you so stupid why were you so stupid all of these years when everyone else was just so consistent so around this time when we uh, made this entire collaboration, one of the things that I'm so stupid on is is I have like this entrepreneurship mentality that is is very like high risky, right? And, and you can see exactly what Graham Stephan does. He's so freaking smart that he'll move his money wherever the most interest is, right? So if, it, if for example, Ally Bank or, or whatever, like any savings account that that actually pays you more for just holding your money in. You know, for me, that, that's that's a smart thing to do, right? Where I messed up on is I had this like unrealistic thing where I'm just so lazy to, to just even think about it. And I don't know why. I know it's very stupid. This is why I'm not a guru. I'm not a financial advisor. I shouldn't, <laughs> I should not give financial advice because in my mind, because I, I know how to make money online, I get so freaking lazy on actually working on the financial literacy side of things. Like, I just want to like bring you guys in on the internet marketing, make money online guru world where everyone sells courses and whatnot. I'm going to tell you this. 
even though there's people like in my industry, people that make money online, people that, you know, big course launches, people that sell these things, they make millions of dollars, right? They literally, like my friend just did a launch. It was a, a $2,000 program, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, right? He'll do like 3 million or 4 million or 5 million. But the thing is they don't really invest it into anything. It's just like they do a launch every single year and then they just live off of the money from that launch and then other affiliate recommendations by launching their friends' products. I kid you not, this is the, the issue that, that's like in the entire internet marketing industry. And, and I'm like the biggest fault of this is because we figured out to make money, we get so stupid on the financial literacy on how to actually invest that money. Like I kid you not, there's so many people like, like a lot of my friends that make tens of millions of dollars, right? They make me look like a small little guy, like an insignificant little fly. They make millions of dollars and they just spend it on alcohol and partying and stuff like that. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like what happens, you know, with boxers and professional athletes, right? Where you, you get really good at making a bunch of money fast. But because, you know, a lot of us don't go through the patience of learning financial literacy like my boy Graham that freaking bought a bank. He bought a bank. What does that? It's insane. Because a lot of like the people that make money online don't have this financial literacy. And, and like I said, I'm the biggest fault of this. We have this thing that happens to like most professional athletes where if – if a making money online opportunity goes away, then there's so many people that make millions that go broke and just lose all of their money because they never had the patience of having the financial literacy, right? So that's why it's like, man, I have so much respect and props to Graham because when I'm focusing on like the next get rich quick scheme that could actually make me more money in a very short amount of time, he's so good at just laying each brick perfectly and perfectly. And even though it takes very slow in the beginning, right? When he's just first getting started, pretty soon what happens is he builds like a very stable foundation where then he could go and do riskier things like angel investing in a bank, right? When you become an angel investor and and you invest in something that, you know, is, is more speculative. It's not an index fund. It has higher rates of return. But because of that, you have a higher risk of losing money. The reason why he's doing that, man, is if you follow his channel, he started off with very safe bets, very safe investments, putting it in index funds. This is something that I should have done with my money. This is something that you should have done with your money. Right? Because whenever I, I come with a huge stack of cash, because maybe I do a launch or I sell a bunch of products or whatever, or I get into this crazy, weird niche that just for some reason, it's like a little hack where I just make a bunch of money in a short amount of time. Because I never had a, a plan for that money, it was stupid money. Meaning I invested it in dumb things like investing in Bitcoin at the height and then just getting wiped out on one investment and just like consecutively like this, right? So it's very smart, you know, like I said, learn from my mistakes. And, and this is just so impressive, man. Like, like congratulations, Graham, dude. Seriously, like ah, I'm so angry at myself for, for dropping the ball on YouTube, but to just see how far you came from this video, it, it's just amazing. I have a lot of thoughts right now. I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings, a lot of freaking emotions, okay? So, so let's, let's just recap all the good things that he's doing that, that I didn't, right? From that interview, when we all did a collaboration, I had a bunch of money, everyone had a bunch of money. What I did wrong was I didn't have a plan for the money. So instead of doing what he's doing and finding all these like smart investing places and whatnot, and like, oh, here's a 1% return, 2% return here. I just depended so much on my ability to make money that I thought I was just gonna be good. But because of that, I, I got wiped out over and over and over and over again. Then you see Graham literally being very smart with his money, putting it in very low risk things. And then, and then once he actually fills, you know, his emergency bucket, then his, then his one year bucket, then his two year bucket, then his five year bucket. Now, even if he absolutely fails with this bank, he's still fine. He's still fine. He still makes like hundreds of thousands of dollars a month making money on his YouTube by telling people how much money he made, which is like so meta and so just such a big mind for me, but it's so smart. It's something that I would have done. What I did is I took a bunch of my money and just went straight into opportunities like this, higher risk, higher reward things. 
But because I didn't have the safety net of being smart with like lower risk investments, just in case this big risky thing went bust, it was always a constant like Mayweather losing a bunch of money, spending a bunch of money. And it's like, okay, time to do like another fight. Who should I fight? Maybe I should fight Conor McGregor. That's another hundred million in my pocket that I could have just spend. And this is the thing that plagues a lot of people that chase making money online opportunities. It's because it's always coming from a place of just like financial ignorance because we never learn this stuff. And then you have Graham being so financial literate, investing in all of these low risk things. So even if this goes bust, it, it, he's fine. It, it's like something that he he just at least tried. right? But here's like where the big opportunity is, right? Like potentially this is something that could make him a billionaire. I don't know if you guys ever realized just, just like the moves that are making how like I'm looking at it, I'm learning so much and you know, I'm angry at myself because I'm not making these moves at all, but it's very smart because number one, the banking industry is like so freaking outdated. It's so old school. It's like, it's something that needs to be disrupted, right? Like even like online banking, you log on to that and you're like, man, this is still like the same online banking experience that I'm still having since you know, the late 1900s, right? And and that's why like when, when Elon Musk came in and, and he created PayPal, it was insane. It was, it was crazy because it was so different because he was so angry at the banks for just being so old school and so ancient thinking. And that was what initially allowed him to propel into, I think that, that's how he made his first like 116 million, right? And then he leveraged that to then become a billionaire. So I don't know. Do you think this move, I'm just curious. Do you think this move could potentially make Graham Stephan a billionaire? I'm just curious. Comment below because here's the thing. You know, if, if he's an angel investor and he has equity in this business, even if it flops, right? Even if it completely flops, he still has all of his assets tied up in really good investments where he could still retire and never work a day in his life for the rest of eternity because he's a freaking savage when it comes to finance, right? But what if it, it, it goes well? Like how insane would that be? This I think could be like a very similar thing with PayPal. The only difference is when PayPal kind of leveraged the dot-com boom, he's kind of like applying his influence to like the influencer marketing boom that's going on right now. Like a good comparison to just show the potential with things is for example, Gymshark, right? For those that are on YouTube, everyone knows what like Gymshark is. It's a brand that started off as a drop shipping business that was just selling products from China that turned into a $1.3 billion brand. Think about that. A $1.3 billion brand. Why was that the case? Why was that the case? It's because they tapped into people's influence and how they have a bunch of attention based off of the influencers and all of their followers, right? So Gymshark was the first of its kind, like a clothing apparel company that capitalized on influencer marketing. And now it's $1.3 billion. It's a $1.3 billion brand. The same thing happened with movement watches. Movement watches was just simple watches that you got from China. And, and from that, they just wanted to give affordable watches to like the normal ordinary human being. And because of that, they were the first watch company to tap into influencer marketing. And now they're looking to get acquired, I guess, for like a hundred million dollars by the Movada group. So this is why, I don't know, like could, could Graham Stephan, this is a conversation. I'm just like really curious what your thoughts are. So could Graham Stephan potentially become a billionaire with this money move, potentially because he is the first that is not only going into an industry that needs to be disrupted, but two, it's the first bank that's really relying on some type of influencer marketing. You know, it's worked in different other industries. So it's like Gymshark, $1.3 billion brand, moving watches, a hundred million. That's already like 10 X in Graham's net worth at that. Like, just think, think about how insane that is, right? He's in an industry banking that needs to be disrupted. That's poised to be disrupted. More and more young people are now interested in finances and we're losing trust with traditional banking methods. You literally have the guy that's like the face of financialishness on YouTube. And now... He's going and buying a bank. Will this money move potentially make Graham a billionaire? When he, when he looks back from this move, would this be the thing that either sets, sets him up for the rest of his legacy's life? Where Graham Stephan would be like the epitome, epitome of the Rothschilds in the future. Just, just imagine that thought. Just what, what are your thoughts? I just want to know. Comment below. So 
<laughs> After investing in a bunch of failed projects, right? I've invested in... <laughs> so, so, so imagine this, right? Graham Stephan safely invests, and then now he could do risky investments. Even if he fails in risky investments, he's fine. I, Mike Vasile, the moron, Mike Vasile, that's not a financial guru, Mike Vasile, that's just some guy in Bali that, that tries to be like the next startup guru that completely fails over and over again. I invested in so many startups that completely failed, losing thousands of dollars on each just draw, right? Or, or, or each try, right? And the thing about this is losing a lot of money in investing in a bunch of startups that went bust is then you start realizing the, the things that did well and the things that didn't do well. One of the things is, for example, with some of the apps that we would try investing in, the ones that actually got like a higher valuation that had more traction in the beginning was when you gamified the experience, right? Like just think about like how many, like I have a friend, right? He's a smart guy, but he spent over $20,000 on this game app just by upgrading and getting new armor or whatnot, right? Just think about all of these games where people are spending money because it's so gamified for you to spend money. So... So this is why it's like pretty freaking exciting, man, because the banking industry is so damn old. It's so old. And the last craziest innovation was like when, when uh, Elon Musk went from just that getting angry and creating PayPal, right? But this, I don't know, this seems like a very different thing. Like most banks and I know don't gamify the system. So, so let's think about that, right? Graham Stephan, the king of finances, Right, that, that, that makes videos and makes money by telling people how much money he makes, where everyone goes to for financial advice, even though he's not a financial advisor. No one's a financial advisor. We're just all just like talking like our, our, our thoughts. He comes in the first of its kind to do some type of influencer marketing for a bank, which we know that it has worked in the past, $1.3 billion and $100 million acquire. Even if he doesn't become a billionaire from this, can this actually accelerate his growth from, I don't know, net worth of 10 million to net worth of 30 million or 50 million? Or if it's a bank and it gets acquired or goes public, right? A hundred million of his personal assets. And then from that 100 million, can he then, I don't know, start his own freaking thing that then catapults him to Elon Musk status? I think we live in this weird time where like, the people that can harness attention on social media are going to be the future billionaires. And just seeing what's happening, because I just want you guys to know, right? I just want you guys to know, Graham is a normal human being, right? Like people watch them and they're like, oh, he freaking bought a bank. I never started even my investing in it, my index fund. And, and Graham's already buying a freaking bank. Just know that when we met two years ago for the first ever like Make Money Online Investing Personal Finance Collaboration, He's just a normal guy, man. He's just a normal guy. And if he is able to do that by being smart and just understanding that all it takes to run a successful online business and leveraging that is just gaining attention on YouTube or blogging or whatever, just gaining attention because no matter what happens to the value of the dollar, the thing that will constantly go up that will always have a bull market is just people's attention. The fact that you could grab people's attention through the internet just because you have a freaking camera and even a you don't even need like all this like complicated stuff, right? Like all of the people in this video started with nothing but either their phones or like a simple camera that anybody can use. Guys, I'm telling you this right now. I've been sitting on the sidelines for the past couple of years just watching all of like my friends completely kill it as I was lazy, just stuck in Bali, meditating every single day, surfing and doing Muay Thai. It's fun. You know, four hour work week is fun, but you know, it's really fun creating something epic and, and, and literally leading by inspiration guys. And I'm telling you this, you do not want to be like me where I sat on the sidelines for the past two years and watched my friends do amazing things and blow up, right? You guys have the exact same opportunity as Graham Stephan. You might not be able to buy a bank this weekend, right? But you can at least get started, guys. So what are your thoughts on Graham Stephan buying a bank? Do you think this, this potentially could make him a billionaire? Comment below. I'm just saying these are just for my research. And if you like this video, make sure you like the video and of course, subscribe if you're feeling like you want to join the family. MikeVasile.com for everything else online business related. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you guys. Okay, outro.